A very warm and hearty good day to all of you. My name is Raman Preet Kaur Bhatia. I am a CA, CPA, DSA and a distinguished Toastmaster. Today, I'll be talking about the module one of our subject of global strategy and leadership of CPA Australia curriculum. I'll be discussing few topics about strategy and we'll be continuing this in our subsequent lectures. What is strategy? This is module number one of the GSL modules. This is the very prime, very prime topic of GSL, of module one, which says that uh, what is strategy? We need to have a brief understanding of strategy. All of us know in our layman language that strategy is a decision. It's a pipeline. It's a summary of all those actions that we are going to do in order to achieve a specified objective. So if we talk it formally, what is strategy? Strategy are those decisions which have high impact. High impact on what? On an organization's value creation activities. So those decisions which have a high impact, they do not have a low impact. High impact on organization's value creation activities and with a view to outperform our competitors. So the simple definition of strategy is strategy is a set of decisions which have high impact on an organization's value creation activities and for those activities for outperforming our competitors. Right. So we'll be discussing more of this in detail now. The impact has to be medium or long term. We do not talk about strategy that we are making this strategy to achieve this short term goal. Of course, we do that. But the strategy which we are talking about in this module will have medium to long term effects on an organization's activities. Now, we know that Right now, I'm discussing very brief, the starting points of strategy. We know that a strategy is planned. We plan it in advance. What I have to do in one, two, three, four, five months, I am planning it. And I have outlined my procedure. But suppose if some extra activity or some extra happening um, comes, Say after two months, the government changes. Say after two, three months, the policy changes. Should we follow the same strategy or do we need to alter our strategy? Yes, we, need, we have a set of strategy, but it has to be emergent. It has to be flexible. It should not be rigid, right? So in order to be a successful strategist, we need to be rational, Plus, we need to be flexible at the same time. Our strategy is planned in advance, but it has to conform to the emerging situations in future. The activities performed and the direction and process in performing them is the foundation of strategy. Right. So we know that certain things have happened in the past. We take note of those past things and then by taking consideration of those past activities, we plan for the future and that future, those future activities have to confirm to the emerging situations. So very briefly, once we'll go through it all again, once again, strategy is a set of those decisions which have high impact on an organization's value creation activities and those activities to outperform our competitors. The impact has to be medium or long term. The uh, strategy is planned in advance, in present, but it has to confirm to the emerging situations. That means the strategy is rational, plus it has to be flexible at the same time. Now, we know that different strategies have a defined strategy in different ways. 
First of all, we'll talk about Shanila, who has defined strategy as a rational approach, or who has defined the rational approach to strategy. Now, what is rational approach to strategy? Which we know that right now, if I'm sitting here, I am making a strategy, I'm making a plan. I know this is the first step, this is the second step, this is the third step. So I'm planning it in a sequence. It has to be linear, it has to be mechanistic, it has to be discrete and sequential. It has to be systematic, right? So these are the things we know that cer certain activities or certain um, decisions that we are taking, we know that they have to be sequential. They have to be uh, systematic. They, we have to consider while making the strategy, we need to understand our present requirement internal requirement plus we need to know the expectation of external people from us so it the strat the rational approach to strategy says that we have to compare the internal as well as the external context then we have to adopt a particular position and then we have to express it In simple terms, how we are going to plan a strategy, I know that today I'm sitting here. In next five years, I want to reach there. So I already have a vision. I want to achieve that vision. But for that, I need to know what are my internal factors which will affect my achievement of that objective which I want to achieve in next five years. Plus, I know that this is my strength, this is my weakness. but I am not sure about the external people, right? I am not sure about the external factors. Maybe I become sick in a daytime or maybe I get some other office engagement in a daytime. So those are external factors. So when I'm planning, I will take into consideration my internal as well as external factors. The next point is I need to have a vision. I need to select options. I should know that tomorrow if I fall sick or tomorrow if I get another office engagement, what are my options? One, two, three, I can do this or I can do that or I can do this or I can do that. Right. So these are my options in case if anything happens, if if I need to deviate from my present set of planned activities, these are the actions which I'm going to take. Because my objective is to reach that position in five years time. Right. So I need to have vision. I need to select options. Now I will select options based on what? Based on documents, based on evidence, based on derivatives, based on probabilities. Right. So I should know that, you know, my health is deteriorating right now. So maybe tomorrow I will fall sick. So that's a that's an evidence. That's a that's a supporting document that I have uh, to I mean uh, which will which can have a limitation for my actions in future. So the another the next point of a rational approach to strategy is that it has to be supported by documents and evidence. It's a logical process. We are not talking in the air. This is a very important point. It has to be a logical process. One thing leads to another. Another thing leads to further another thing. Further another thing leads to further, further another thing. It has to be a process, a logical process. The next point is, again, what we said, systematic process to achieve future goals. Then I know I have made a process, I have made a system, I have made a sequence. But what if I deviate? What if I want to do it today? Tomorrow, I don't want to do the second step. Maybe I want to do the third step. Or maybe day after tomorrow, I do not want to do the third step. I straight away want to skip to the fifth step. No, that is not allowed. There have there has to be certain rules. Of course, as we said that it the strategy has to be emergent in nature. That means we have to take in account the emerging situations, but of course, with certain set of rules. 
So the rules to deal with the situation. The next step is step-by-step -step approach, which is just the same as a systematic approach. Then we know that we have made an approach, we have made a process, we have taken into consideration everything. Now we need to, if I need the support of one person, two person, or three person, three persons to reach my goal, I need to communicate my strategy to them. I need to tell them that this is what you have to do. I cannot say that I have made a strategy, I have made a plan. And we have to go, we have to reach at that point in five years time. And you people have to support me. Then what are those people actually going to do? They do not know. They have to be communicated. So we learn more about this in our upcoming uh, modules when we when we'll study about the importance of communication. So a rational approach to strategy involves a clear communication and legitimization. The next point is it adopts a particular position to achieve future goals and express it as vision. This is my starting point. This is my end point. If I do not define my present position, if I do not define or if I do not know where I'm standing today, how will I start? So I have to adopt a particular position to achieve future goals and express it as vision. I need to know that this is my starting, this is my end, this, these are the steps in between. So I have to strategize or I have to plan for these steps. Next point is select options on the basis of merit. So basically what we are talking in this rational approach to strategy is all it's it's a crux it's a, a combination of all those things which we are going to study further now this point says that select options on the basis of merit i know that this is my option is it good or no i should skip to another option maybe that is more beneficial to me so i have to select options on the basis of merit the last point for this is Organizing framework to analyze and plan strategy. Of course, we have we have talked about it, that it's an organizing framework to analyze and plan strategy. I'll just go through all these things once more. All these points that I have outlined or I'm of which I made the notes. What is the rational approach to strategy? Linear, mechanistic, discrete and sequential. Systematic, comparing internal and external context, adopts a particular position, have a vision to select options, has to be supported by documents and by evidence. Strategy is a logical process. Strategy is a systematic process to achieve future goals. There are certain rules to deal with the situation. It's a step-by-step -step approach. There has to be clear communication and legitimization. And we have to select options on the basis of merit. So that is the rational approach to strategy. This approach was given by one of the eminent writer, Chandler. Now, we come to another, we come to this, this is the rational approach. And now we come to different authors and different strategists have defined strategy in their own definitions and concepts. Right now, what we have done is the rational approach to strategy, which will, which is very common and which will, which we will be going through in our upcoming modules that was given by the author Chandler. Now we come to the next author who is Adam Smith and his uh, definition or his concept of strategy is known by the name of invisible hand. Now, what is that? What, what did Adam Smith talk about? He said that strategy is a self-entrusted behavior that is self-regulated the market and hence devel developed and structured the market. He says that it has to be self-regulated and 
I have to develop and structure the market. Right? It's an invisible hand, self-interested behavior. I will do whatever I like. I will do whatever suits me. I will do uh, whatever is beneficial to me. And accordingly, the market is structured. So Adam Smith assumed this point and his strategy is known by the name of invisible hand. Right. Once again, we'll talk about Chandler. Uh, his work is known by the name of strategy and structure. He said that make long term goals and allocate resources to achieve those long term goals. So that means that that just means the rational process to strategy. Now, the next author is Michael Porter. Michael Porter also plays very significant role in the definition, in the development of definition of strategy. And he talked about competitive strategy. Right. So while we know what is the difference, once again, we will just summarize the rational approach because in order to understand this competitive strategy, we need to be very clear that what is rational strategy. We know it's a logical process. It's a step-by-step -step process. Certain rules have to be followed. We have made some long-term goals. We have allocated resources to achieve those long-term goals. Right. So this is rational approach. Now, when we come to competitive strategy, Michael Porter said that he compared himself with the industry. He said, how is the industry? In, in that industry, what is my position? If I get to understand this, that what is this is my, the industry, this is my position in the industry. And accordingly, I will determine my profitability and accordingly, I will make my strategy. So he is not saying that this is my goal, that this is this is me right now. This is my goal, how I have to go step by step and achieve my objective. He's just saying that this is the industry. This is my position in the industry and the profitability, my profitability in the industry is determined by my position in the industry. And that's how I will design my strategy. Of course, you know, that uh, implies to the emergent approach to strategy, which we know because Chandler said that the, uh, the strategy has to be rational. The strategy has to be planned, but Michael Porter said that the strategy has to be emergent. So, as a uh, on a rational basis, we as a I mean, everybody who is making a strategy has to consider both the things. We have to take both these points of Chandler as well as Michael Porter. We have to understand that the strategy has to be planned. At the same time, strategy has to be emergent. Right, it has to evolve. It has to. It needs to be uh, evolutionary strategy. So, coming back to Michael Porter, we know that he talked about competitive strategy. How is the industry? What is my position in the industry? And that will determine my profitability. And accordingly, I will make my strategy. Right. So now, when I am going to say that how my profitability is determined. I have two concepts here. He said that we have two ways if we want to be profitable in an industry. What are the two ways available to us? The one, the very first point is if I reduce my cost, right? This is the price at which I'm going to sell, right? But if I reduce my cost and if I'm selling at this point, at this point, uh, price, my profitability is increased. Or alternatively, if my cost is reduced, my margin will increase, the customers will start, you know, uh, my profitability is increased. But then when he says that, the second point that he talks about is my cost remains the same, but my product is different from other people. The, uh, the other people, the consumers, they will come to me to buy my unique product, right? So that is known as differentiation. So Michael Porter's strategy, again, takes us to, he says that I have two options. Either I reduce my cost or I 
keep my cost the same, but I diversify my product or I differentiate my product from others so that other people come to me to buy my product. That way is also my profitability will be increased. Now, this gives us two more terms. The first uh, way that he told us is that I should reduce my cost. What is that? That is operational efficiency. The second point which he gave that I keep the cost same, but I differentiate my product from others. So that give, gives us the second option, which is differentiation. So we have got two new terms here to understand operational efficiency and differentiation. What is operational efficiency? Now we'll talk about operational efficiency. It says that the operational efficiency is or the operational effectiveness is how better can I do the same activity than my competitors? Right. Here I'm talking about reducing my cost. May how will I reduce my cost? I am doing the same activity, but better than my competitors. The crux is the same activity. I am not talking about different activity. I am talking about same. If I am making a soap, if my competitor is making a soap and I need to market, I need to sell the soap to my consumers, how should I make it? I should make my processes so strong. I should increase my operational efficiency to that extent that I am performing the same activity, but better than my competitors, right? In that way, my cost is reduced and I can make more profits, right? So here we are talking about improving our process by doing the same activity. But again, there is a catch point in this. Sooner or later, the competitors will match up to my operational efficiency and then that advantage will be lost. Right. So that is a uh, uh, that's a very good catch point in this that today I have improved my process. I know I have uh, I used to do one, two, three steps. Now I've combined two and three steps because of my improved processes. No, now I need to do only two steps, right? So for the time being, I am able to hold, uh, I'm able to control my prices, but my competitor got to know that this is the process that I have achieved to get operational efficiency. So today, no. Tomorrow, maybe day after tomorrow, that competitor is going to do the same process. He's, he will take advantage. He will try and match up to me. And my operational, this, the advantage that I had by improving my process will be lost. Right. So what is the solution to this? The solution is that I perform the similar set of activities, but in a different way. Right. Or I do a different activity. That. He's doing this. Let me try and improve and improve it further. Let me try and do it in a different manner, which is not disclosed to my competitor. Right. So uh, once again, we'll summarize this. What is operational effectiveness? How better I can do the same activity than my competitors? Sooner or later, my competitor will match up to my operational efficiency and that that advantage will be lost. Right. So Michael Porter gave us coming back to that. Michael Porter gave us two ways. He said either I improve my operational efficiency or I do differentiation. Now, this brings us to our second concept, which is differentiation. What is differentiation? Differentiation is doing the same, doing different activity or doing the same activity in a different manner. Right. I am doing the same activity, what my competitor is doing, but I am adopting a different way. Or what I have done is I have totally altered my activity and I have started doing a different activity to my product. 
that is differentiation. That is our second point. Our cost is the same, but our product is better. Our product is differentiated from our competitors so that the customers come to me and they say that, yes, this product is different, so I'm going to buy from you. Your product is better than the competitor. So that is differentiation. Right. So now we will once again summarize the strategy given the concept of strategy given by Michael Porter. He talked about competitive strategy. He said, what is my position? What is the industry? What is my position in the industry? Based on that, my profitability is uh, determined. And then my profitability is determined. And accordingly, I'll make my strategy. Now, he gave us two options. He said that first one is either I reduce my cost, which is known as operational efficiency, or I should keep the cost as same, but I make my product differentiated so that people come to me and buy my product and I earn more, right? And then we said that operational efficiency is not long lasting. Someday or the other competitors will match up or they will compete with me and adopt the same process. And they will also have that operational effectiveness. So my uh, advantage is lost. So in order to do that, in order to combat that, the solution for that is differentiation. So uh, there is this very important line that differentiation is better and superior and gives us higher margin. Now, one thing which I missed is when we talk about operational efficiency, how can we achieve that? Cost efficiency can be achieved through economies of scale, through better processes, or whatever we can do to reduce a process. That is the uh, function of a general accountant, right? When we talk about a business controller or when we talk about a finance controller, we know that how you have to, uh, this is basically the operational cost try and control the operational cost, right? Now, this is also a deliberate and a rigid approach. Now, the one of the biggest disadvantage of Michael Porter's theory is that he said that all activities, what he assumed in his mind is that all activities should stop when the strategy is being made and when once made, we have to follow it straight without any modification. It's a structured approach, no doubt. But the biggest drawback of this strategy is that he said that all activities should stop when strategy is being made. And once made, we have to follow it straight without any modification. He said that he also said that an organization should be focused on differentiation and say no to products that do not align with the strategy. He said that he was very focused. He said that when we are doing differentiation, when, uh, when we are doing differentiation, please focus on that. It's a very focused approach. He said focus on that and say no to the no to those products which do not align with our strategy. This product, I am not comfortable doing this. I will not be doing it. Let me do a totally differentiated product. I am not in competition. I am just making my own product so that people come to me and buy from me. Once again, Porter said that focus on particular group or product or location and we should not be going broader. Right? Now, once again, we'll summarize those two points. What is operational efficiency? Doing the same set of activities. Uh, how better can I do the same activity than my competitors? And differentiation said, doing similar activities, but in different way or doing different things. Right? So that was Michael Porter. So till now, we have studied three uh, authors and their concepts of strategy. First one is the Chandler. Second one is Invisible Hand by Adam Smith. And the third one is Competitive Strategy by Michael Porter. Now we come to the fourth one, fourth author, which is Henry Mintzberg. And his work is known by the name of The Rise and Fall of Planning. What did he say? He said that strategy should not, should be flexible, dynamic, 
and based on creativity and intuition, he said that strategy should not be rigid. It should be flexible. It should be dynamic and it should be based on creativity and intuition. So we know that it is suitable for any present day organization. We cannot say that this is what is happening right now. Things will not change. And if things will change, I will not cooperate. No, he said that evolve, be flexible, be agile, be innovative, be dynamic. Right? So Henry Mintz's work is work known by the name of rise and, rise and fall of planning. So he focused more on planning with respect to the dynamic environment that we have. And so he was against the structured approach. Right. So ideally, we can say that this is the best, but then at the same time, we know certain rules have to be made, certain regulations have to be made. So we know that Chandler, who made a rational approach, who adopted a rational approach to strategy is also good. Plus, we have to combine the work of Henry Mintzberg also, who said that it has to be flexible, dynamic and based on creativity and intuition. Right. So these are the four work of four authors, different authors who worked on the concept of strategy and questions may be asked in the exam based on uh, your understanding of strategy. So once again, we'll summarize this lecture. The first one is Chandler, who said that strategy is a rational approach. Strategy is Linear, mechanistic, discrete, sequential, systematic, logical, step-by-step -step approach. He said that we have to compare the internal and external concepts. He said that we have to adopt a particular position and start from there. He said that we should have a vision. We should have different options and we should select those options on the basis of merit. He said that strategy has to be supported by documents or by evidence. And he also said that we need to have certain rules to deal with the situation. And he also emphasized, John, that there has to be clear communication and legitimization of the strategy. Right. So this was the rational approach. Then we studied the concept of Adam Smith whose work is known by the name of Invisible Hand. He said that we are, we, it has to be a self-entrusted behavior. It has to be so that we can self-regulate the market and hence develop and structure the market by ourselves. The third one we studied about was the author, Michael Porter, whose work is known by the name of Competitive Strategy. He said that I will base my strategy based on my assumption of how the industry is and what is my relative position in the industry and that will determine my profitability based on my determination of my profitability i will make my strategy right for that he gave us two way, different ways that one is that i will reduce my cost or the second way is i will not reduce my cost but i will make my product differentiated from others so that people come and buy my product which will be a competitive advantage for me so those two terms are known as operational efficiency and differentiation. What is operational efficiency? Doing the similar set of activities, which my the same set of activities which my competitors, competitor is doing, but I am doing it in a better way. How will I achieve that way? Either by reducing cost or by economies of scale or by improved processes. But sooner or later, my competitor is going to match up with me. My advantage will be lost. So what is the best process that I start doing the similar activity in a different way or I start doing different activity? This concept is known as differentiation. So the, strat the strategic approach of Michael Porter was deliberate and very rigid. He said that his was a very structured approach. He said that all activities should stop. He assumes that everything will be stopped. Once I will make my strategy, I will go according to that and I will not make any changes. I will not make any modifications and I will just adopt the strategy. So we got to know about the fourth uh, author who is 
Henry Min's work and his work is known by the name of Rise and Fall of Planning. As we know, we can infer from the subject of from the subject of his work that rise and fall of planning. We talk about more about planning in this. We emphasize more on planning. We, he said that the strategy should be flexible, dynamic, based on creativity and intuition, and it should not be rigid. It should be agile. It should be innovative. It should be dynamic. He was against the structured approach, which is well suited to present day organization. Right? So that is all for today. Stay tuned for the next topic.